All right, well, we're just getting ready to assemble these bearings soon. Um, and got them all cleaned up, just let them soak in diesel overnight. That melted off the rest of that residue. Probably just give them a quick rinse and some acetone. Get rid of any diesel off of them. Any residual packing grease. But these parts are all cleaned up and ready to go. I looked over everything. Um, I don't see any defects or anything on the bearings. So I think that we're, we're good. Um, I'm going to get ready to pack these bearings with grease. Um, this is what we'll be using is Ultiplex synthetic grease. It's good for marine use. So it doesn't wash out. Um, low and high temperature grease. Extreme pressure bearing applications. So that's the grease that we'll be using. That's kind of a, a tannish white. Yeah, so... Um, so we stopped by the parts store this morning, hoping to get a torque wrench, but they don't have any that are that low. So we're supposed to torque these small three mil bolts to uh, to three and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And so the ones that they have only go from like 10 to 80. So I'm gonna have to see if we can't find one and get it shipped in. So in the meantime, we'll just snug these up. We're not gonna be running this um, yet until we're out of the yard. So it'll be fine just to install these. We'll snug them up good and uh, get them positioned. That's really what we're doing right now is getting the bearings positioned so we can get the bearing block in the correct position and get it fiberglassed into place. That's the, the only thing that we're doing right now. It'll be easy enough to come back and open this cartridge and retorque the, the rings right here. And that's what we'll do. So the uh, application chart for these bearings actually have a, a pack um, percentage. So uh, in talking to our, our rep, our technician, he recommended 100% pack. Um, that's what it says in the chart here. So um, depending on like your shaft size, your shaft speed, and the RPM, those are all variables that they use to determine how full to pack your bearings. And then based on that, they tell you uh, how many ounces or how many grams. So we'll just weigh out the appropriate amount. We're gonna go with 100% pack on this. Uh, the reason this matters is because uh, some bearings aren't made to be run completely packed full of grease. That could actually damage them. It uh, gives a higher resistance and that resistance builds heat, which breaks down the grease and um, can damage the bearings. So because our temperature is lower and our speed is low and the weight of the shaft, all of those kind of come into play that allows us to, to just do 100% full pack, which is nice and easy. So we don't have to worry about that. And then, uh, he basically said that you can't overpack the bearings. So we'll just do it um, to what they say. And then as we add grease over time, we also don't really have to worry about that. I think we'll start getting these guys assembled. So quite exciting. Yeah. Hmm. Fun times. Mm-hmm. Okay guys, we are ready to start assembling this bearing. Uh, we have all our pieces and components over here. They're all cleaned up, ready to go. Got our tools, instructions, grease. Let's do it. So normally on these, you would start by putting your base into place. This is a part that the housing that holds it. Um, in this case, our bearing block is not attached firmly yet, and it's just for the simple fact that uh, we want to be able to get the spacing more or less correct from the get-go. So what we're going to do is actually assemble the bearing on the shaft. Um, this position is approximate here. It doesn't matter if it's over an inch or two one way or the other. Um, that's where it's going to be. 
So we just have to put the bearing itself uh, over the top of that and like I say it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit. So we're going to mount the bearing and then we're going to put the housing on it and then we'll draw this bearing block up underneath and then we can glass it into place. So that's why this isn't affixed and that's why we're kind of going about this um, maybe in the reverse. But the important part is at the end of the day that you just assemble the bearing cartridge correctly. So we'll set this aside for now. Um, the nice thing about these bearings is that you can slide the stuff in afterwards. And uh, it doesn't matter right now because we've got plenty of clearance anyways. So, the first thing is to just separate this, uh, this seal. This is a labr labyrinth seal. That's always a hard word for me to say. But uh, it's a two-piece seal. It's got an O-ring split in there, so you just knock these pins out and then we'll put one on each side. I maybe should have brought a little block of wood or something, but we'll see here. That seemed pretty clean. Yeah. So these are just aluminum. We'll take care not to beat them up too much, I guess. I don't believe it matters which way these drive out. What am I missing, Matt? weird. Separate the seal halves by driving out the two joining pins. Lubricate the o-ring in the bore with grease. Um, I guess we could just cheat and just slide them on the shaft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Maybe that's the best way to go about it. Maybe. I mean, it does kind of like save a step. Yep. So I think we'll do that. We already have the coupling off down here anyways. So we can just, uh, just lubricate these and slide them onto the shaft. I don't know if I want to like risk damaging these. That seems like it should have come out a bit easier. Like it should have moved, it didn't even move. And I'd rather not like damage these and then have a problem later. This is actually the correct size, but yeah, it's tight. So let's just do that. Okay. Um, Cause we can do the same with the other too. Yeah. Yeah. The other coupling will be off and just, yeah. Slide them on. Yeah. And they're not critical, they're positioning. They get positioned last anyways. Okay, um, that solves it. Let me go ahead and actuate that. There's a right there. I didn't tighten the thumb screw on that. But I've, I've got the, the metal here. So we're just using a little hydraulic jack to support the shaft. It's got a, a chunk of channel here with a couple of hunks of wood in there to protect the shaft and not mar it. So a lot of this is a, just a learning process for us too. So that's why things take a little bit of time. 
I'd rather not rush into it and make mistakes and destroy things. Especially when they're expensive. Yeah. One more? Probably. So yeah, the Cooper and the bearing size faces out on each side. So we'll make this the forward one because we're coming from the aft. So yeah, I do have the keyway right here. These are pretty sharp sometimes, but looks like they deburred this one. I don't feel a real sharp edge or anything. So we'll just kind of gently put this on here and see how feels yeah okay that's all right I'll take a little bit of that grease though and smear it right there this the tube is fine yeah it doesn't feel sharp or anything extra grease won't hurt nothing though right all right sure. here and these other yeah everything looks good right there it's probably like a really easy way to separate those <laughs> is a little more muscle probably huh probably or just like being overly cautious and first time can't blame us I have a feeling if you <coughs> do this for a living you're like ah just throw it together and pound you know, on it it's fine <laughs> but like I say we're gonna err on the safe side we can't just run down to the store and get a new one of these yeah. and uh, these bearings came off of eBay and they were probably about 20% of what you would pay for brand new ones. So they were quite a substantial savings. Well, that fits nicely on that. So I'm just twisting this because it's gonna spin anyways. Maybe less risk of rolling a O-ring out or something. Hey, it'll be in pre grease for the next one too. The shaft. Slightly, huh? Yeah.
as we continue on the process here, we'll keep this, uh, probably have this housing off, and then, or at the very least, once we get this stuff in place and we're fiberglassing and grinding again, we'll wrap this really good with some shrink wrap and try and keep the dust from getting up inside that bearing. Okay, so the first thing the instructions say to do is to put these the labyrinth seals on, which we did by cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> we took the easy route. <laughs> Save some time. So the next step would be the pedestal base and lower uh, half flange, but um, but that's going to go on last because of the way that we're doing this. So we're going to start next with the inner race. So uh, let's see, we've separated it. So, so we wanna put a feeler gauge in the bottom. So we're gonna position these two, uh, these two halves of the inner race. That's the part that the bearing actually rides on. And then we want a, a 15 thou feeler gauge at the bottom joint and that sets the gap between the two halves. And then as we tighten up the, the clamp rings, we will check that. So, I got a feeler gauge here. I don't have a 15 thou. I guess I can just add two together, which makes it awkward, or I can just go with 14 or 16. It just recommends uh, 15 to 22 per side. So let's just go with the, with the 16. Sound fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. So these are the inner race right here. They can be orientated wrong. So on these ones, they have uh, writing stamped on both sides, so you just want to match that. It's important because of the way they were ground. Now these ones are staying in position, yeah. So yeah, I guess so kind of where you want your bearing to be is where you uh, tap them on. Mm -hmm. And we can come back and, and change these if necessary, but there won't be any point in doing it once this bearing block is in place. It's a done deal. So I think that we liked where the bearing block was, right? We never actually marked it. At this point, really, it's just where our cutout is here. Yep. So I guess we could grab that and double check it and make sure it's where we want it. But, uh, I think it's okay. but I think we were just kind of aiming for the center of this. We need to leave a little bit of room in the center for our, uh, our inspection hatch to bolt down. So there'll be a bar that comes across and a bolt that will go through it. But there's there's room here for that, so I think we're just gonna pop it on here, huh? Yep. About in there, you, you reckon? I think so. Okay. So these go anywhere from a 90 to a 20 degree offset compared to the split line here. So that's pretty important. Um, they just recommend that you put these in place so you can get it. the bolts easy. And these are also matched together, so they've got a number stamped on them here, four, five, three, four, so you don't mix up the two halves. So we'll put these like that. Now this one's got the threads in it, so we're gonna position that down. And it also has this, uh, this shoulder right here that needs to go in against the bearing. bolts in here to hold these halves in place. They're not falling on the ground. Does that position look pretty good there? Then, like on the, 
on the dealio. Is that where we want it? I think so. Exactly. The right? center is right here, but that's like old. So. But I mean, it is uh, fairly centered mm -hmm. on the cutout. Yeah, I think that's kind of where we were shooting for, right? Yeah. Okay, we just put the support for the inspection hatch in here. We're just kind of double checking the position. Um, that looks good. It is off center a little bit because we'll have a, a bar that goes across here that the inspection hatch bolts down to and draws it down to create a watertight seal. So that'll allow it to be in there without interfering with the top of the uh, housing for the bearing because it's actually up here a little bit higher. So remember this will have two layers on top of that. This is just a, a, a heavy support underneath to, to make sure we don't get any sag in this area. So that looks good, I think, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. And okay, we're just kind of easing into this because we want to make sure that it's done properly. So I got my feeler gauge in the bottom. We're just gonna Tighten these up a little bit. Hold it in place. Check the top. That's good. So it just says the gap should be between 15 and 22 thou on both. And so uh, it is right there. So happy with that. Grab this other ring. So this has a shoulder on it where the bearing rides against. So these are um, expanding, which means it gives a little bit of movement this way, um, axially, I guess. There's also another type that's just a fixed one that doesn't allow movement. There shouldn't be much movement in the shaft because the reduction gear is actually built to take up the thrust um, from the from the propeller as it goes forward in reverse, you have thrust on the shaft. And so you've gotta be able to absorb that and transmit that power into the hull. Otherwise you just destroy your bearings in about two seconds. So if you looked inside the twin disc reduction gear, there's a huge set of cone roller bearings that are thrust bearings and they take up all that, um, all that force. Okay, well, I just snugged these up. Um, we don't have a torque wrench, so we have to order one. Unfortunately, there's none in town. Maybe we'll check with a, one of the me mechanics or something around town and see if there's one we can borrow to at least torque these to the, the proper setting. But for now, um, we're just gonna snug them up. We're not actually gonna be running this yet, so I don't think it's really crucial. The biggest thing right now is just to assemble this so eventually we can get this bearing block positioned and glued into place, just suspending it off the bearing. So that's the, the only thing that we're looking at doing right now. So uh, I think we're just gonna put a little bit of grease on the bearing just to lubricate it and not do a full pack on it until we actually torque these. So um, just to dab a grease on this to, to coat everything and that should be good for now. Um, and we're just going to put the cartridge together and, and that will be that. And we'll just pack it out later, so. Okay, so since we're not actually mounting this to a pedestal, um, this being the pedestal, a pedestal that's already hard mounted, we're gonna go about this a little bit differently. Um, if this was already mounted, your next step would be to take the bottom cartridge half and rotate it into position 
on your pedestal and then you would insert one of your bearing halves, spin it around into here and then clip in your next one and put on the other half of your cartridge housing. But uh, like I say, our pedestal isn't mounted yet so we don't have to go through that. Um, that is just strictly so you can put this on and off in place. Um, that's how you rotate the bearings and the cartridge housing to be able to rotate them enough to clear the pedestal and remove them. So we're a little bit out of order on this, but it doesn't matter. So the next thing is we're just going to put these bearings in place. Like I say, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on them just to um, protect them, I guess, a little bit. We're not going to do the full pack right now because we, we're going to have to disassemble this anyways in order to get these torqued again and I don't want a huge mess to deal with. So we'll just put a little dab of grease on each one of these. The shaft isn't going to be spinning at speed or anything like that so there's really no chance of damaging any of this stuff. Our plan is get all the shaft shafting aligned and everything and so there's a chance that this just might have to come off anyways. Yeah, lots of unknowns currently, so just switching up our plans a bit. Yeah. I suppose we'll go over it a little bit more later, but uh, in the short term, just kind of putting this together to uh, <laughs> well, we're putting it together so we can get our bearing block in the proper position, or at least close to it. Get our bearings straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It just snaps together like that. And roll it around to the other side and snap that side in. It's as simple as... How easy is that? That. This is the lower half of the cartridge. Uh, this actually pivots inside the whole pedal still. This is a, just a ball and socket basically. And before we're done, this will get coated with the anisees which will allow this to, to self-align to some extent. Um, that's why they're designed that way. So your alignment doesn't have to be perfect on your bearing block in terms of this being perfectly parallel to your shaft or anything like that. It can be off a little bit and, and this yoke will compensate for that in the pedestal housing. So very nice design. It's just the same as a pillow block essentially. Once again, this can only go on one way. There's stamping on the side right here. So that will allow these two pins to line up properly and register in their hole. If you flip it around, the pins will still go in the hole, but it is offset and that will not work. So um, this is the top, it's got a greaser right there that's currently out. So let's see, we need to put this race in here to be positioned properly. And make sure I got the holes on the right side. So these are just the races. So you can actually, if you damage these bearings and enter an outer race, you can buy these as a kit and reinstall them in a cartridge. They're not machined to actually match the cartridge itself, just the bearing halves and uh, the races are machined as, as a set and then the same thing as this cartridge housing. So this just drops right in there. Very simple, no muss, no fuss. Can move it a little bit. The top one is a little bit more important. There's a hole right here and that corresponds with the bore of this grease port. So you want that to be aligned because that's where the grease actually comes out. And then it can also move along this channel on both sides and come out these two holes that match up together on this. So. Cool, I didn't actually notice that. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it's kind of cool how they machined it. They, they drill it here and tap it and then the bore comes through here into the inside that is hidden now. But you can see it right there. Uh-huh, nice. And then when they're done with that operation, they just put a little plug in there. So, so we just align that. 
Put that hole down there and we are good to go. Put a little dab of grease on these. Let's put the bottom one on first. Get a couple screws over here where we're not stretching a mile to grab them. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'll just put a little dab of grease on this. Deposition these seals in place now? Yeah, and they'll need to be positioned in place. Put a little dab of grease on this one too. So when you say full pack, are you basically just grabbing the gob of grease and just working it into every little crevice and groove on these bearings or? Yeah, like you would pack these completely full and then I guess it also corresponds to how much is actually in this cartridge. So there's different percentages of pack um, all the way down to, what is it like? Uh, all the way to 25%. So for some applications, you would only use like, yeah, 25% um, for the speed, RPM, and uh, weight of the, or diameter of the uh, shaft, RPM, and then um, operating conditions, they recommend 100% pack. And that's just a volume they say on here. It's uh, 5.3 ounces or 150 grams of, of uh, grease. Gotcha. And so they just basically want you to put that in there mm -hmm. and we'll see if it all fits. Yeah. That's like a, that's almost a half a tube of grease in here. I, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna fit, so we'll see. I, I guess there's a lot of room on the sides here. Uh, let's see, so we are, oh this is, we're gonna have our greaser going forward, right? So that is that stamping forward. So we've got our stamp right here. Um, the numbers don't really mean anything as long as they both go that way. So yeah, I guess you can see all that grease in there somehow. It'll fit. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we'll just slide these down now and get them into position. It's a little bit tricky to align these, I guess. I think that's got it. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. And we'll stick this one on top. thinking this is probably a bit trickier because normally that would just be supported by your pedestal. So originally our thought was that we could just put this on here and hang this bearing block off the shaft or off this bearing I should say and get this bearing block glued into place and now we're kind of um, backpedaling from that yeah, so we never actually pulled the line from the back of the engine through the stern tube to the cutlass bearing where the prop shaft exits the vessel. And that would be the proper thing to do when you're lining up your bearing blocks and your bearings and everything in between, um, your stuffing box, all of that. So we've just basically made an assumption, which is usually a bad thing to do, especially when it um, concerns old equipment and prior installs. And we just assumed that the stuffing box is, was aligned correctly and straight. And we kind of based that on, you know, not seeing any wear, like on the inside of the stuffing box where the shaft would have been rubbing against it. And the fact that the, the Babbitt bearings that were in here looked like they were wearing evenly and there wasn't excessive wear or anything. But like I said, that was probably a bad assumption. 
and it's probably something that we shouldn't rely on because we might find out that um, that it's not as straight as we thought it was and as a result these bearing blocks could be glued in in the wrong position. Um, what we're trying to avoid is excessive shims so we know that we're going to have to shim it to some extent but we don't want to end up with like 125 thou of shims because then we have to like come in there with a thinner plate and then build up our shim pack from there. So uh, we are going into the yard soon. We've got an appointment. It's in a couple of days. We'll be heading there. I don't know if you'll see that video before you see this one. It's hard to say. But at any rate, um, we are scheduled for the yard. And at that point, we can just do it properly. We will put our um, the housing for our cutlass bearing back on the keel on the outside of the boat. And from there, we'll be able to center a line and pull it straight to the center line of the engine of the reduction gear where the shaft bolts up and then we can accurately position these bearings on the bearing block and i think that that's what's the right thing to do like we're not really saving any time by doing this right now um it just wanted to get it done and out of the way but i think the the right thing the prudent thing is just to wait and get a, a string pulled and make sure that the stuffing box is where it's supposed to be. And these stern blocks, we can put them in and really avoid even having a lot of shim pack. Yeah. We should just be able to literally be like within five or six thou, which is perfect. Yep. So that was kind of this afternoon's um, discussion and dilemma, and I'm glad that we took some time to talk it over and come up with that conclusion because once these are in here, it just gets a little bit harder to go back and either fair them down some and remove some material if they ended up too high or have to add like an eighth inch plate in there and then shims on top of that. Mm -hmm. Or even worse is something like, you know, less than, oh, I don't know, like a 16th or something. It just gets harder to get a flat piece of plate at that at that point without having like a surface grinder or something which we don't we don't have access to that kind of stuff so that's where we're at and I think it's all gonna work out good here in a few days we're pretty excited huh Matt yeah yeah we've been pretty excited to get the yard finally get our shafts in and, and start buttoning up this this shaft alley in a long time coming so yeah very excited to get over there and get into that part of the project really once the bearing blocks are glued in then it's pretty much full steam ahead uh, we don't have a lot of stuff to put in here a couple of pipes really is all um, just basically running back into that area I suppose we're gonna have to punch a couple of holes over there and, and see exactly what we have to work with and how we're gonna maybe have to run some 45s or some 90s up in there or something, but essentially just for conduit, um, a drain line, water line will go through there, some fuel lines. So that stuff will just get attached to the sides of these. So that's kind of waiting on the bearing blocks being put in place before we put this other stuff in, in case we have to take the bearing block up out and do anything to it. I don't think we will, but uh, it's, it's best to wait on that and not have that stuff in your way. So yeah, these bearings are kind of a big step. That was nice to get that done today and check it out. Uh, we're going to start getting the other one cleaned up. It won't take very long. We'll just toss the parts and some acetone again and loosen up that grease and get them cleaned up good. Mm -hmm. And then that other bearing will be ready to go. It's going to go back here right at the end of the shaft there'll be a coupling um, on our in intermediate and then the coupling on the tail shaft and the bearing will be right after that once we have that shaft in place we'll just do the same thing we'll install the bearing on it and get it lined up so, yeah. so that'll all be coming up real soon here um, good thing is that they're both on board and we'll just go ahead and get the other one dropped down here and get it ready to slide into place well, that was a good little dry run anyway, huh? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great to see this put in there. It feels super smooth. Um, yeah, boy, that shaft is going to spin nice, I think. Nice. Yeah. A lot of boats have these, so uh, we're pretty excited to have them. It's going to be a lot less worry than, than the Babbitt bearings. The Babbitt bearings work great, but they're really not the best application for a marine because, like, technically, Babbitt bearings are supposed to be lubricated with oil as opposed to grease. And on boats, um, there's no way to put an automatic oiler in here. I, I mean, well, you could, but you would have to refill it. And then, of course, you're going to have oil in here all over the place. It was bad enough just dealing with the grease. It just yeah. gets slung everywhere. These shouldn't have that problem at all because just the amount of grease that you're going to put into this thing over even, even 4,000 hours would be 100 pumps of, of or 100 lubrication cycles and that's like 300 pumps of grease. That's not that much. It would be much easier to come in here and keep this clean now as opposed with the other ones. It was just kind of greasome every day type thing was the schedule, I think. Right, 4,400 hours per loop? 400 hours per loop. Okay, yeah. Oh, that'd only be so 10. That'd be 10, yeah. That'd be 10, not 100. Yeah, it's like, wait. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot, or I guess a lot less grease actually come in, so. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, exciting. Oh, exciting. Very exciting. So, catch you guys later. Thank you all for watching. And if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below what you think. And